All right, here we go. Rock and roll. Once again, welcome y'all to the call. Uh, we'll go ahead and let more people in here as they continue to jump on. There's another one right there. Um, and uh, once again, yeah, thank you guys for letting us know where, where you're all coming in from. We've still got people popping in, so we'll give it just a second. But yeah, uh, as mentioned just a moment ago, today's call is a, a software strategy call, right? How to get the most out of the software uh, so that you can use it as an educational tool for your own personal training. So as always, I'll kick this thing off with a uh, disclaimer. You know, when it comes to the software, you know, obviously, uh, you know, everything that we're going to show today, you know, this is just based on a personal experience. None of this is guaranteed. Uh, you know, there is no, no uh, income claims being made here. Nothing like that. Uh, this is just my personal opinion based on my experience with the software. And as always, make sure that you are running the software on a demo account so you can learn the software, learn from it, and use it as an educational tool. So here we go. All right. Well, the, uh, the drop-ins slowed down a little bit, so we'll go ahead and jump into it. First off, I will go ahead and ask, um, who feels like to have a, a good understanding of the software as it is right now? Uh, drop a one in the chat if you guys feel like you, you understand the software pretty well. And drop a two if you feel that there's a lot more that you could learn. Just trying to figure out where everyone's kind of sitting and then we'll, we'll uh, base the call on that. Okay, awesome. Bill, Bill, yeah, definitely you've gone deep and, and learned a lot about it, so that's great. Uh, Jimmy is a two. Ronnie, brand new, so welcome, bro. There's Dan, all right. Uh, Jeff, Jeff, I definitely know he's gone deep. Alex, Chastity, Dale, awesome. <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, great. So uh, we've got one-ish. All right, Chris, that works, bro. We'll, we'll turn that into a, a, con, a confirmed one by the end of this call. Uh, but yeah, this is great, guys. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, you know, this call will be short and sweet. I want to go ahead and get through the main pieces of the software, make sure I get those explained. And so my next question for you guys is when it comes to the videos, right? The, uh, the videos that you know, go into all the details, explain the software, the settings, everything like that. How many people have actually checked out those videos? If you have, drop a nine in the comments. And if you have not watched those, give me a 10. I just want to kind of see if, if everybody's at least gone through the, the bare, bare minimum, bare basics. Okay, cool. Well, Ronnie, you got started in the last 24 hours, so no worries, bro. Cool. Looks like everybody's got through those videos. So that's great. So you guys have a really solid foundation on the software. So that's perfect. Um, so we're just going to add to that today, right? So first things first, everybody should already know how to access their VPS, but I'm going to go ahead and jump into that. First off, if you have never set up your virtual private server, you will need to make sure that you go back to the getting started section. Let me hop on here real quick, make sure I've got it loaded up. There we go. Boom. Cool. So uh, if you guys have not gone through the getting started section, you'll, you're going to want to go ahead and do that here, right? We've got a welcome video. Um, we've got a get in, getting started section. Uh, this is obviously going to you know, show you the basis of getting, getting your virtual private server set up. We've got Nova Explained, Stellar Explained, Go, and all that fun stuff, okay? So if you have not watched these videos yet, make sure you jump in there. We created them for you so that you feel, uh, you know, just knowledgeable and that you have a, a clear understanding of how the softwares work, right? So what I'm going to do next is um, if you guys don't know how to access your VPS, what your VPS is, is your virtual private server, right? So if you guys were to have access to these softwares uh, and you wanted to run it on your own home-based computer, right? Well, you would need to have that computer running 24 seven, like all the time. And that, that computer would actually have to be connected to internet as well, right? So the majority of you guys know this, but for those who don't, that's what your virtual private server does. Your VPS is a computer in the cloud. And if you've never accessed your VPS, the first thing you wanna do is click on reveal here. Uh, you'll go ahead and type in the password that you log in to higher level effects with, and then click on submit. What that's gonna do is it's gonna give you a, a crazy alphanumerical, uh, password that you're going to use to actually sign into that virtual private server. Once you have that password copied, you're going to go into access your VPS, which I already have open right here, and it's going to open up just like this. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'll just kick these off here. I'm going to minimize these because this is normally what you would see right here. 
is you would have uh, you know, your updater, you'd have these four terminals, two MT4 terminals, two MT5 terminals, and then you guys can ignore these. These are a bunch of different settings that I've got programmed uh, and saved on here, just so that uh, you know, if there's something that really works better than something else, I've got it documented. And you guys will, if you're not already doing this, you guys will learn how to do that on this call as well. So um, for everybody who's currently on the call, and if you guys are watching this on the replay, give me a hashtag replay in the comments. Uh, and then also you guys can answer this question. Uh, out, of, out of the softwares that Higher Level offers, uh, let me know which software you are using primarily right now. You may be more using one or the other. And if so, just drop you know Nova and Stellar in there. But yeah, in the comments, let me know which software you are currently using. Just trying to figure out you know, how much time we need to spend on both of these. There we go. Chris is Nova. Dan Nova, Natalie Nova, Alex Nova, Jesse Nova. There we go, Chastity. All right, Nova and AlphaGo. Very cool. Jimmy Nova, Dale Nova, and Bud is using both. Good stuff. I love it. Yep, Jeff, I know you're definitely uh, going deep on both of them, Nova and Stellar. And then Jimmy said, yeah, willing to switch to Stellar if it is better. So, you know, just to be straight up with you guys, there's not really any one software that is better than another. They, they just trade differently, right? They're gonna give you different percentages. Um, they're gonna give you, uh, you know, higher or lower drawdown. There's a lot of different things that come into these different softwares because of the way that they enter the market and also how they manage their tr those trades that are open, right? There is Christian. Um, Christian says running tests on, no on Nova, beautiful. <clears throat> and and also MT4 Alpha, so it must be running on the original 2.0. Love it. Uh, let's see here. Can I about? Sorry, I'm just getting approval. To see if there's uh, one thing I can can share while we're install. All right, cool. So if you're brand new into your VPS, right, you'll you'll need to out, actually get a demo account from your broker so that you can sign into that demo account through one of your MetaTrader terminals. And so what MetaTrader is, uh, we've got MetaTrader 4 and MetaTrader 5, right? MetaTrader is essentially the platform that, you're, that overlays on top of your broker, right? It is the trading platform. If you got set up with a, a broker and you're like, hey, I want to place a trade on EURUSD. Well, there's no way to enter that trade directly through your broker. You have to go through uh, a trade manager or a trading software such as MetaTrader. MetaTrader is the primary software out there used by the majority of brokers. There's a few other ones out there, Seat Trader and whatnot, but you guys won't be messing with those because they're not available in the US. So we'll stick with MetaTrader today. Keep it nice and simple. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open up my first. This is uh, my MT4 demo on Stellar or for Stellar, right? We'll just kind of go back and forth. All right. As you guys can see, I actually have a live or running demo on this uh, account started at four thousand dollars. Or sorry, five thousand dollars. It's up approximately four hundred fifty-nine bucks as it is right now. Sorry, we still got people dropping in here, so I'm gonna keep letting them in as they come. Uh, you guys will see that I'm currently in two different setups, right? With that, what that would mean is two different pairs. We've got the New Zealand dollar versus the Canadian dollar, and we've got the Australian dollar versus the U.S. dollar. Currently, we are actually in negative drawdown, so that means we're in a positive. You guys can see down here in the bottom right-hand corner, there is a, you know positive floating 40 cents, 30 cents, somewhere around there. And so if you've never logged into the software yet, this is just for brand newbies. The majority of you have already done this. To log into your demo account, you're going to click on File, Open an Account, and then you're going to search for your broker, right? So if you're with my broker FX, you're going to go and search it. This is MT4, so they're actually not going to pop up, but let's just do this one. Let's do, um, sorry, they're an MT4 broker. <clears throat> you search for your broker name here, and there's their servers. If it's alive, then you choose this, but otherwise, there it is. There's your Mazzari Capital demo server right there. You click on next. You're going to say, I want to log in with an existing trade account, and this is what you'll actually create directly through their website, through the broker. They're going to give you an account number. They're going to give you a password and then finish. Go ahead and sign in, right? Now, I'm already finished. I'm already signed into an Osprey demo as it is right here. And you guys can see here on the MetaTrader 4 platform, we have access to three different softwares. 
those three softwares are going to be Alpha GI or Alpha Alpha 2.0. This is the original flagship product that uh, was released back in 2020. Um, a lot of you guys know my story, but for those who don't, I got started in the expert advisor artificial intelligence trading space at the end of 2018. Um, to date, I've tested, you know, anywhere between 65, 70 different softwares. And when I found Alpha back in 2020, I realized that this software was very, very different than so many other softwares I had tested before. Um, you know, I even tried to essentially break the software and, uh, you know, get to the point where I could blow my account. And, and I had a very, very hard time doing that, which is what gave me the confidence to actually you know, go all in with this software as an educational tool. So uh, Alpha 2.0, uh, we're not, you know, not a whole lot of people are using that. So I'm going to primarily focus on Stellar today. Um, and then you guys let me know in the comments. I know that a lot of us are using, um, are using Stellar and Nova these days. Um, if you guys would like me to, I'm more than happy to go through Alpha Go and explain that to you a little bit. Uh, but that might be towards the end of the call. Uh, but if you, you guys have an interest in that, just drop a one in the comments and I'll kind of gauge interest that way. But if you guys would prefer to stick with more Stellar and Nova, drop a two and uh, we'll go from there. Cool. So as you guys can see this, these two trades are kind of floating back and forth. The software entered these trades automatically. Awesome, two, two, cool. I agree, that is beautiful. Um, so yeah, they're, you know, the amount, over here is kind of like I said, going up and uh, up and down, back and forth. And these trades got put in, you know, in the last few hours. Once again, NZD CAD and Audit USD. So I'll show you guys a, a direct comparison, right? The way that Stellar enters the market and the way that Nova enters the market is actually very similar. But the way that it manages those trades is quite different, right? So let's go ahead and jump into the settings for Stellar real quick. Which, by the way, for those who don't know where to find it on the MT4, there's a little smiley face up here. You just double click on that, and here it pops out your settings. Now, first off, we always want to make sure that we check every box on the comment tab except for disable alert. Make sure all of these are checked. And then on the inputs, this is where we actually are changing our settings around. Okay. So stretch this out a little bit more. All right. And you guys can all see my screen. If so, drop a 777 in the comments. Make sure you guys are all following along with me. There we go. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Cool. <clears throat> so this first setting here is the actual starting lot size, right? We always want to use a very minimal lot size because, you know, nobody can predict exact moves in the market, right? I don't care how many gurus you guys see on YouTube or are trying to get your credit card information on, on Instagram. Nobody can predict where the market is going, especially not 100% of the time. So what we do is we always use, we always like to run very conservative settings because we've seen that in the long term they are definitely the safest settings to run and that produce consistent profit on your demo account every week. So your lot size is basically how big of a position size do you want to, uh, you know, do you want to use when running the software, right? So on on Nova. Uh, excuse me, on Stellar, uh, the typical recommended is a 0 0.01 lot size for every 20, every 2000 to every $2,500 that are in the account. So this one is running a 0 0.03 lot size for about 5,500 bucks. Now this next uh, section here where it says max allowed pairs to trade. How many, how many actual pairs do you want the software to open at any given time? We wanna minimize this obviously to minimize risk. Uh, we want to make sure that we are only running, you know, two or three pairs at any given time. But as you guys will see down here on the trade only, right, where we actually put in the ideal pairs that we want to trade, all of these pairs are either a combination of the Australian dollar, Canadian dollar, US dollar, or Great Britain pound, right? So typically, you're only going to open up two, you know, about two different pairs uh, at any given time. We got some more people hopping in here, so let them join. <clears throat> so when it comes to your max pairs to trade, whoa, we're back. All right. But when it comes to your max pairs to trade, we have it set to three, three pairs, right? You can change this number, but because we have our 
currency shield on, uh, which I'll show you guys in just a moment, we're only going to ever open up two pairs at any given time. Now, take profit on first trade. This is where we decide, okay, once the software decides to enter the market, to enter its trade, how many pips or how many, you know, yeah, essentially how many pips or how many points of profit do we want to take before the software closes that out uh, at a profit trade, right? So this, I think the standard that comes with the software is 10. I bumped this up to 12, just to get another couple of pips out of it. Because if you really do the math, you know, if I had it set at 10 uh, versus set at 12, um, every, every five trades, I'm actually getting an extra trade, actually technically every six trades, um, I'm basically getting enough profit to equate to one additional trade that I didn't have to make going for 12 pips of profit versus 10. This is variable, right? This is all based on you. And uh, you know what you're testing out with the software. Um, so if you guys are taking notes, make sure you write that down. That you can actually test different take profit levels and figure out what works best for you. All right. And now Stellar actually comes with two different trading styles. Intraday, uh, which is primarily what I use, right, is uh, basically going to give you a lot more trade opportunities. But, they're, but at the same time, you know, what we see is, you know, about a 72, 73 percent, uh, you know, win rate when it comes to a trade opening and going straight to take profit. Now, on the other hand, we've got Super Sniper. This is another setting. You're not going to get very many trades, but the likelihood of these trades moving to take profit faster uh, is much higher than intraday. So ultimately, you can kind of go back and forth. But for me, I think like most of you, I like a lot more action. So I keep my trading style on intraday for Stellar. Now trade management, uh, I won't go into this too deep here. I primarily go with ETR just because I don't wanna you know, spend too much time going through all these different settings. You guys can watch the videos on the last page to go into more depth. But for me, trade management wise, I usually go with the ATR strategy because it seems to produce more profit um, you know, on the back end if, you know, if say a trade picks up another uh, another level or two, et cetera, or a hedging trade, as we always say as well. Currency shield control. This is essentially your safety regulator. When you have your currency shield control, what that means, uh, as I mentioned earlier with these pairs down here, what the currency shield means is if you happen to be in this pair, odd CAD, the Australian dollar versus the Canadian dollar. Well, when the currency shield is set to true, that means you will not be able, even if there's a signal, even if there's an opportunity for the software to jump into another pair, you will not be able to pick up any new, any new pairs that have the Australian dollar or the Canadian dollar. So if you were in the odd CAD, that would eliminate the odd USD because the Australian dollar is involved. It would eliminate the GBP CAD because the Canadian dollar is involved. It, it would allow you to trade the GBP USD, but it would not allow you to trade the NZD CAD or USD CAD. Um, it would allow you to trade NZD USD at the same time, right? Because you're already using a, a pair that has those two currencies involved, the Australian dollar and the Canadian dollar. So currency shield is really what keeps you uh, safe, right? This is why I use it because if let's just say something happens, right? Maybe there was some major, you know, like today it's FOMC. Maybe there's some major news coming out for the US dollar and it could either majorly strengthen the US dollar or can majorly de you know, decrease the value of the US dollar. Well, if I am running with currency shield set to false, right, then and I'm in odd USD, GBP USD, NZD USD, and USD CAD, then as you can see, if all of these trades are going in the wrong direction, that can get pretty sticky and uh, ultimately lead to higher drawdown than I would want to see on my personal account. So I always leave that set to true. Max pairs, um, this really doesn't apply all that much unless you do have currency shield off. But basically, uh, if I have ever happened to get to the point where my equity is 95% or less, which means I'm in 5% drawdown or more, then, and I'm only in one pair, it's not gonna pick up another pair to trade. It's like I said, just another safety regulator. Your max allowed drawdown will determine, you know, if you say, hey, if I ever get to the point where I'm at 20% drawdown, I just wanna close everything out and start fresh. So you could actually turn that to true. I usually keep it on false and then say, hey, uh, you know, since this is a $5,000 account, if I ever get to the point where I am in a thousand, let's just say a thousand dollars drawdown, we're just gonna cut it and then we'll start fresh, right? So that is also another safety regulator for you.
boom. Spread filter, that's dependent on your broker. You don't really have to mess with that all that much. Trade specific pairs, I do have set to true. If you, if you turn this to false, then this will trade, uh, from my understanding, all 28 currency pairs that are, are available. So basically you would remove all these right here, right? And see if they come back, there we go. You remove all these and then it would trade any specific pairs that you wanted it to. So you'd be picking up a lot more pairs, but at the same time, we, we try to uh, trade the safest, or I personally do, the safest and most profitable and the most consistent pairs. And we've, over the last two and a half years, kind of got that down to a science for these seven pairs here. OddCAD, OddU, GCAD, GU, NCAD, NU, and USD CAD. If you guys are taking notes, that would be probably one to write down. But we also have different, different guides in the Telegram group. So you guys can check those out. And uh, that'll answer a lot of your questions there as well. All right, broker specifics. This is uh, not going to apply to 95% of you, but if you do have a broker that has, you know, a suffix such as like dot pro, uh, then all you have to do is put dot pro in here, and then that way all of these, uh, all of these specific pairs, it would pick up the dot pro version of those. Currencies to ignore, right? Uh, most of us don't like trading CHF pairs or JPY pairs, so. If you did have them listed in your trade only, you could just add them right here. And then the software is not going to trade any pairs with the Swiss franc or the Japanese yen. So you can use that to your advantage as well. And then notifications. These notifications can actually be sent to the MetaTrader app on your phone and ultimately notify you. Let's just say, hey, I want it to notify me once I hit 10% drawdown. Or if a specific pair opens up three levels, uh, you actually have all the ability to change that or if, hey, if uh, you know if there's any news based on the currency that I'm trading, say the U.S. dollar, it's going to alert me 60 minutes before that news, so I can either go on and 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 manage the software, or I can and let it write out. But I'm just aware that hey, news is happening, so you want to pay attention to the software. So that is the you know very simplistic version of Stellar, y'all. Uh, any questions, please feel free to uh, drop those in the chat, and then I'll get on to answer those questions about Stellar before we move on to Nova. Boom, all right. All right, Jeff says that uh, he had one account that is up 7K in one month on Stellar and then, uh, or sorry, on Alpha. So the original Alpha 2.0, another 4K on another on uh, in one month on Stellar, uh, even with the crazy market moves this last week. So boom, gotta love it. All right, I had it false once and it went to 80% drawdown with three trades. Exactly, yeah, Alex, good call, bro. Yeah, you'll definitely wanna leave that currency shield set to true. I personally do, obviously you are the trader in command and this is, uh, you know, this is a learning experience for all of us. And so Natalie is asking, is the main difference between Stellar and Nova, the inputs and variables that can be adjusted? So, Yes, the settings are going to be quite a bit different between Stellar and Nova, but the way that they manage trades is going to be, you know, different as well. For example, if you happen to hop into, uh, you know, we'll, we'll just pick on odd CAD again here. The software picks up a, an odd CAD trade, a, the Australian dollar versus the Canadian dollar, and you have your take profit set to 12. And, you know, you're hoping that it goes, you know, it, it goes bullish. And so it, it puts in a buy. But what if it puts in a buy? but the market goes down and it drops and it starts selling off. Well, the, the way that the software is designed is to get you out either at break even or a little bit of profit, even if the market moves in the wrong way for a little while, right? So what the software does, especially based on the ATR strategy, is it uses the average trading range for that specific pair for OddCat. So if the average trading range, for example, is let's just say for every every you know, 30 minute time block, it's move, you're typically moving 12 pips. So it takes the ATR, multiplies it by three. Therefore, the next level with, uh, you know, on odd cat, right? So you put in a buy, the market dropped. Once it drops 36 pips is when it puts in another, another hedging trade and also a buy trade, but also uh, a small, slightly larger lot size. So that way, when this trade opens, if the market starts to reverse, we don't have to come all the way back up here to get to break even. We literally have to come back right here, a small retracement. And if it goes even further, then this trade happens to be in a lot of profit. This one might be a, in a small loss. 
or it could surpass it and both trades go into profit. It all just depends on your, uh, your system, your, your settings, and, and how you decide to run the software. It's very customizable. We obviously, in, our, in, in my group, we have uh, just some recommended settings to get everybody off onto a good start. But as some of the guys in my group uh, are learning is, you know, the fact that this is fully customizable, there is a lot that you can do with this software in order to, you know, really kind of, kind of hack it to your uh, preferred trading method, right? So um, uh, let's see here. David's asking, you know, what is the difference compared to Nova? So kind of, kind of, you know, answered that question just a moment ago, but if, you, if there's any specific questions, please ask away. The way that it enters the market is very similar, but at the same time, trade management is quite a bit different. And I'll explain that and kind of break down the differences once we go over to Nova. So any, any questions, any further questions on Stellar before we move over to Nova? Drop them in there now, and then we'll make sure that they get answered. And then obviously we'll have tons of questions at the, at the end, but this is a, a, great, a great time where I can kind of break down the two softwares, the two primary softwares that most people are using. And then from there, we'll go ahead and uh, move on over to showing more of the differences here. So cool. Well, I'm going to close out of this, guys. Boom, unless more questions pop up. But just to kind of show you guys a comparison, right? This is a $5,000 demo account that I started, which I'll show you here. Let me pull it up a little bit. I started this $5,000 demo account on May 3rd, but I did not actually turn auto trading on until May 20th, right? So uh, this account, let me see if I can actually do some quick math here. If I started this on 520, that would have been one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about seven and a half weeks, right? At this point, I turned it on, conservative settings, just been letting this thing run. I really have not even been paying attention to it. Actually on my YouTube channel, I kind of been breaking down the differences between both softwares and, and kind of pitting them against each other to see what is the most profitable. Uh, I can tell you right now that Stellar has definitely had more drawdown than Nova, but what you'll see here shortly is, uh, you know, this this software has made 400, Stellar has made $459.79 on a $5,000 account. So let's go $459.79 and divide that into 5,000. So we're looking at, look at that, in just seven and a half weeks, we've done basically 9.2% growth, 9.1% growth in seven and a half weeks. I haven't touched the software. I haven't managed it. I just let it do its thing, which is pretty impressive for, uh, you know, for software doing this on its own. Now, let me compare this, right? $459 profit. Let me compare this over here to Nova. There we go. Now, for a while there, for the first couple of weeks, um, Nova was actually ahead, um, you know, and you're kind of seeing this right now. It's in a, in a, a really solid trade right now with GDP USD. But as, as it is right now, this one has done $403 profit on a $5,000 account. So this one's actually just slightly under 8.0%, right? My thoughts is as time goes, they'll kind of go neck and neck and then they'll pass each other along the way. Because it all just depends on what the market's giving you and, and also what the settings you're running. But I'm essentially running the same settings on both, uh, well, basically running conservative settings on both softwares. So there we go, right? The nice part about it is it's fully, you know, fully under your control. If I see this GBP USD trade and I decide I, I like, wow, this thing's almost $15 profit, uh, I can actually close out the trade and take the profit right there. But for these two accounts, just the side by side comparison, I just let them run, do their own thing. And uh, that way we've got some real data to look at at the end of this uh, demo, demo test. Cool. So let's see here, got that one done. I can use this setting for a prop firm. Um, Olu, can you give me a little bit more uh, breakdown as far as what you're asking? Um, and we'll see if we can get it answered. But ultimately, uh, you know, obviously these are educational softwares to, to teach you more about the market. Um, you know, I first got into Forex back in 2018. I didn't want to know anything about trading. I didn't think I was smart enough. I didn't think I had the time, all of these things. But because I started using expert advisor softwares like this, I learned a lot just by watching these things trade to the point where, you know, I'm a full-time trader now uh, for about a year and a half as it is now. 
Um, started learning about two and a half years ago. It took about a year to, to learn a specific strategy. And now I, I use both in tandem, right? I, I use software for ideas and then I place my own manual trades uh, as well. So that's just, that's just my story. But anyway, I hope that helps answer your question. So now we're over here in Nova. As always, you will you need to make sure that we allow algo trading. So this, this box is important. If you're like, hey, I, I turned the software on, but it's not taking any trades, make sure that you allow algo trading. If you guys remember over here, this, this button is called auto trading, but on MetaTrader 5, they call it algo trading, right? Okay, cool. So now I'm just going to show you, I, I'm pretty sure I'm running just stock settings, actually, pretty much right out of the box. Um, you know, for Nova here, there's a couple things that I did change just because it is, uh, Nova is a, a, you know, I would say a, a little bit safer software than Stellar. Uh, the drawdown is typically quite a bit less when comparing them. I would say about 33% from what I've seen on this test so far. Uh, you know, if uh, if the highest point of drawdown was, let's just say, $150 on Stellar, the highest point of drawdown I've seen on Noah is about 50 bucks. So uh, basically 33% of, of what we've seen on Stellar. So this is where it comes in, right? The more you know about the software, the more you, you know, the more data you can take into deciding which one you want to run. But as I always recommend to people, you guys have four software licenses. You can run two MT4 accounts, two MT5 accounts. Why not test things out and figure out which one you like the best, right? Which one suits your trading style? All right, we got still people popping in here, so cool. And as as you know, as any other questions pop in here, I'll get to those guys. But I'm just going to go run through these Nova settings real quick. Excuse me, we're making good time. Um, it's about a little over half an hour. Goodness. And so, um, as you guys will see right away. The settings for Nova are quite a bit different than Stellar, right? First off, we've got this setting called Autopilot, right? This is an AI feature where it actually automatically chooses all of the settings for you. So ultimately, if, if you want you know, the software to run extremely safe and you want to like really learn why it's entering and, and why it's using the lot size it's using, you can actually turn this to true and, and all of these, the rest of these settings will be chosen for you, right? Um, I personally like to be a bit more hands-on as I think some of you guys do as well. So I always keep autopilot set to false because I want to be able to really reach in there, uh, manage the settings based on how I manage the software. And yes, yeah, Bud said, absolutely. Take advantage of all four different demo accounts. Totally agree. That's how you guys learn fast. And, uh, you know, we've got a group. It's a, it's, a, it's a group where we basically kind of share our software settings what's working for us, um, you know, percentage growth, all that good stuff. And so, um, you know, it's just a great way where we can all kind of work as a hive mind to figure out the most ideal settings for each of the different softwares. <clears throat> all right. So if you guys have not watched the video for Nova yet, I highly recommend that you do it, right? A lot of these settings, um, I'm just going to kind of breeze through here just so we can get back to questions. But ultimately, the zone range is... Um, it's basically, uh, you know, it's the ATR of Stellar, right? So the zone range is, is saying that, hey, uh, you know, between each, each invisible level or each invisible hedging trade, you know, I've got it set to 27, you know, 27 pips between each level. You can, you know, if you want to make it more conservative, you can bump this up to 50, uh, not 500, but 50, um, you know, but that's, that's totally up to you. So there we go. Maybe not. Okay, we'll go back to the summer. <laughs> there you go. Um, and the way that works is in conjunction with the minimum buffer zone. But first, I'll go through the uh, alligator uh, period here. So alligator is based off, it's based off the 13-day moving average, right? Uh, you want this to be more conservative. You can bump that moving average up to, you know, 40, 50, 100, right? But obviously, the lower, the, the more, the, the faster you're gonna enter in hedging trades in order to get out of any trades that may have gone against you in the market. The min minimum buffer zone, what that means is, um, you know, if, if, the mar if the software finds an ideal reversal point, right? But, you know, let's just say it's 13 pips between the last trade, right? Then it will not enter a reversal trade because you have your minimum buffer zone set to 27. That would mean that if, 
if it finds a reversal zone, but uh, it's less than 27 pips, it's not gonna enter in a hedging trade. It needs to be 28 pips or higher in order to place a hedging trade in order to get you out of any sort of initial trade or draw them that you may be in. And if you guys have questions about that, um, you guys can ask those in the, in the comments and whatnot. Now, I'm gonna jump into the balance for every 0 0.01, right? We talked about lot size in, uh, in the previous software with Stellar. Now this one uh, is different, right? It's not just the starting lot size. You actually get to choose what is your balance for every 0 0.01 lot that is being traded. So what I have it set to is a 0 0.01 lot for every $1,000 in the account. So it's a $5,000 account. So the starting lot size is 0 0.05. So something to be said about, you know, lot sizes, drawdown comparisons between the two and overall profit, right? There's, like I said, there's many ways to uh, skin the cat, but uh, through your own testing, you will find out what works best for you. So as again, the starting lot size on this account would be 0 0.05 because it's a 0 0.01 for every $1,000 in the account. Once the account grows to $6,000, the starting lot size will be 0 0.06. I think you guys got it. All right. Now on this one, trade specifics, right? We have those exact same seven pairs that we that we were running on Stellar, you know, odd cat, odd you, so on and so forth, right? So what we're just what we're choosing is like we only want to run these pairs with Nova versus Stellar. You it will not trade any pairs unless you designate specific pairs for the software to enter, right? Uh, now, as far as the max pairs, same thing here. I have it set at five, but because there's so much overlap between the different currencies, we're typically only going to see two two different uh, currencies open, currency pairs open at any given time. Hopefully that makes sense for you guys. Any sort of extra pairs, you know, let's just say, hey, these are my primary seven, but I also like these extra three pairs, right? These are gonna be extra trades. So if there's, it's super slow day in the market, there's an opportunity for another pair that might not be in your priority pairs, then you could actually have a sub, uh, a pair of, uh, basically a sub list of additional pairs and you get to choose how many of those you want them to open. I personally don't use any, so I have that set, max extra pairs set to zero. Currency shield, we went through that with Stellar. True is just gonna be safer. Uh, you know, It's gonna keep you from getting into higher percentages of drawdown, so I personally set it to true. Spread filter, just like, uh, just like Stellar. Uh, Stellar's spread filter was in points, right? And for every pip, there's 10 points, or 10 pipettes, as, uh, as we say in Forex, right? So this one is actually in pips. So if this, if it said spread filter in points and we wanted four pips, then we'd actually say 40 points. But because it's in pips, we just put a four there. And that's also gonna be dependent on broker, uh, the broker that you guys are working with. Now take profit with the ATR and alligator. What this setting does is it actually, uh, you know, if this is set to true, the software is actually going to essentially shoot for more profit than what you have down here on your minimum take profit or minimum profit while managing. What it's going to do is if the, if the market is moving drastically in your way, you actually see this happening. Let me get back in here. You see this happening on this pair right now, right? On a 0 0.05 lot size, uh, that's 50 cents per pip. If I had this set to just 10 pips of profit, then every $5 as you get, well, actually this has always been on. So basically every $5, this trade would already be done, right? It would, the GBP USD would have gotten five bucks and, you know, it would have moved on to the next trade. But as you see now, we've more than doubled that, almost tripled that five bucks because we have the ATR and alligator set to true. Boom. Now, if you turn this to false, then you get to control these settings down here, right? So if we wanted to trade very similar to, to Stellar, we could say, hey, take profit on the first trade. We're gonna set that to 12 pips. And then if there's a, a, you know, a trade that's under management, meaning there's a hedging, one or more hedging trades on that same pair, you can say, hey, if we could just get an extra five pips, you know, I just wanna get in and out if there's additional level stacked, but you could also bump that up. I also wanna get 10 pips on, on any sort of stacked trades or hedging trades as well, totally up to you. I personally, I like to set it to true. And, you know, as you guys are seeing on GPP USD right now, usually works out, uh, you know, in my favor. So now same thing here, we have a drawdown protector, uh, max allowed drawdown, I have that off. So it's set at 
This one is actually based on percentage. So, you know, like we said in the last video, hey, I want to cut my losses and say, hey, if I ever hit 20% drawdown, let's go and close all trades and then I'll reset the software and start all over again, right? So you guys can control that completely. I personally leave it off at 100%. And then on the max allowed lot size per trade, there's guides to this inside the Telegram group. And that's going to be dependent on your account. What I usually tell people is, you know, I would usually say if you have a $5,000 account, you would take that account, divide it by 10,000, and that's going to give you your starting lot size, 0 0.5. I, I threw on another, another half to that, so 0 0.75, but, um, you know, that's all in the eye of the beholder. I just want to give you some details into where my max lot size comes in. Okay, actually, here. This is another one that I, I didn't realize I had both of these on, but uh, we've also got stacking on profits. So what this, what this setting does is it's going to try to maximize profit uh, on any trade that's moving in the right direction. So where I have this set up is, hey, if, if this trade goes 50 pips or 500 points in the right direction, then I want to open up another trade because this thing is clearly moving in the right direction. Let's go ahead and open up another trade, 50 pips below there. And if they're both moving in the right direction, then I'll have a trailing stop loss of 20 pips behind the initial trade. I go through that in more detail in the video. So feel free to jump on that. And then every single time we move a pip in the right direction, the, the stop loss moves a pip up as well. So anyway, guys, I know that's a lot when it comes to the settings. This is more going to be a Q&A. So I, I wasted 45 minutes of our time going through those settings. But hopefully that gives, kind of gives you a good base. But let's, let's jump into questions. What questions do you guys have? What have you seen with the software thus far? Um, let's dive in and uh, we'll get those answered. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, David. I appreciate it. David, Jesse. Beautiful. Now, when you guys are running the software for yourself, you know, what, what have you guys seen um, for, for, you know, the tests that you guys have been doing? What have you been seeing on your demo accounts? How can I answer some more of the, uh, the more in-depth questions that you guys aren't sure how to ask, um, or maybe just didn't feel like you had enough knowledge to ask because you didn't understand the settings as well. Boom. Awesome. Glad to hear it, Christian. Thank you. And then Jeff and Jimmy, you guys are awesome. Beautiful. Now, Chris is asking, um, what does the, so uh, how does the software decide to take the trade? Is it based on fib calculations or candlestick patterns? And so there, there's a lot of depth that goes into that one. Um, ultimately, the short answer, it, it, it is candlestick patterns, right? Um, based on 21 years of back to data that we have ran, um, each individual pair actually enters the market differently. So there's not one set standard pattern that every single pair enters in off, right? We're looking for a very specific pattern that goes to take profit more, you know, more often than not. And so each individual pair is dialed in to that specific candlestick pattern, whether it does a buy or a sell, et cetera. There's obviously a few other things such as trend and, and uh, you know, other indicators to improve that entry. But long story short, yes, candlestick patterns is the, the short answer there. Boom. Uh, David, yeah, uh, the, the uh, replay will be available within an hour or two after this call. And so anything that you want to go into more detail, uh, you'll have access to that. I'll make sure that you get a copy. And then also uh, make sure you guys don't forget over here in the getting started section, you guys have access to the getting started video, which there it is, getting started video, which shows you how to get your VPS set up. Always a good refresher on that one. And then also the settings that go or the, the explanations that go through Nova, Stellar, and Go. Since we didn't have time to go through Go, I would recommend going ahead and uh, checking out uh, these videos, spe specifically Go, if you do plan to use the manual trading software to try your own hand at it, right? Let's see. All right. Let's go back over here. Yes, you're correct, bud. If you turn stacking on profits, if you turn that to true, then that means these next three settings are enabled. If this is false, then these don't matter at all. But if you do try to, if you, you do use stacking on profits, then yes, all of these three are within your control after that. How does the software handle changing from manually selected settings and back to AI? 
So uh, ultimately, if you have autopilot false, right, and you have your own settings in, and then, you know, you get into a situation where you're not sure what to do, uh, you know, you, you're unsure of how to handle it, and you want to turn autopilot back on. Well, once you turn autopilot back on, the software is going to obviously take the, the most ideal and the safest approach in order to hedge you out of those specific trades. Now, if you ever get into a situation like that, make sure to ask us inside of the Telegram group because we can probably give you, uh, you know, some very simple ways of managing those. Um, Christian, I know I was chatting with him over this last week. Um, I'm not sure if it's the same Christian, but I see a Christian in here. And we kind of went through a few different settings and, you know, the software worked him out of those with no issues whatsoever. So yeah, it's, it's definitely situational on whether or not you want to use autopilot and turn it to true and, and let it take over. Or if you want to go ahead and uh, manage it based on your own settings. And we also have another Drew in here. So welcome. I don't know that we've met yet, but welcome. All right. <clears throat> Let's see here. 300 pips down on GBP debt. Um, Mike, yeah, I would have a question regarding that, Chris, is um, did, did you have, have autopilot on at that point in time? And also, you know, what's your current drawdown? You know, if you're, if you're under 10% drawdown, then I would just leave your setting as is. If anything, you could bump up your zone range and your minimum buffer zone, you know, to like 80 or 100 so that you don't stack on any more trades. But ultimately, yeah, we, we don't usually do a whole lot of manual volume. I don't, I would say until I start to see upwards of 10 plus percent, maybe 15% drawdown. Okay, and how, and Chris, how long have you been in those trades? Which obviously you can send me a message after this too, and we'll look at your situation specifically. Gee, okay, so not that long. Yeah, man, send me a screenshot on Telegram, and then I'll go through that and look at it with you. Got another one joining in the last minute here, all right. Yeah, send me a screenshot and we'll kind of figure out where what your settings are looking like. I know that uh, anyone who's been in NZD CAD, it's just fallen off a cliff here lately. So, uh, you know, we are definitely due for a reversal. We could see potentially see that with F FOMC. I'm actually looking at it right now. Okay. And actually, we do have some, we have some good relief signs. So that's awesome. So, yeah, we'll, we'll wait it out. We just got to break the structure to the upside on the four hour. So, um, that's kind of what I've been waiting for, but ultimately, yeah, send me a message. We'll, we'll run through it and we'll put a plan together on uh, best wage. So, all right. Does Go manage trades using Stellar or does it use? Okay, so yes. All right, so this is probably where I'll close it out. If any other questions, drop it in there, guys. Um, you know, we've got about 10 more minutes here. And so what I'm gonna use these last 10 minutes for is to go into AlphaGo a little bit, right? If you guys have not watched it yet, go ahead and watch the original video for AlphaGo. Um, you know, it goes it goes hand in hand with the HLX Trader app. If you guys do not have the HLX Trader app, it is now available on iOS and on the Google Play Store. Um, and so, go ahead and use that. Uh, you know, use that as uh, an option or an idea for trade ideas. Uh, when you're using AlphaGo. I've got a video inside of the Facebook group as well that kind of goes through all of that. So if you guys weren't aware of all of these resources, I hope that this has been enlightening for you guys today. And also, if you're unsure, hop on the Freedom Society group on Facebook and you'll see underneath the guides section a bunch of how-to videos of how to use these softwares and get the most out of them. So, all right, this is, this is uh, like I said, any other questions, drop them in there, guys. But I'm gonna go ahead and stop screen sharing here and once again thank you guys for all sticking around this whole time if you guys have gotten a bunch of value so far give me a 777 in the comments kind of make sure everyone's still awake here and uh there we go and uh, able to apply this on their own accounts thank you guys very much so the announcement i was going to give you right for those who have used AlphaGo, you guys realize that this is a very powerful manual trading tool right uh, you can actually connect it to a demo account. And what it's going to do is it's actually going to uh, basically correct any bad trade that you take in the market, right? Uh, once again, go watch the AlphaGo video if you haven't seen it already. But the good news that I have is we have not really been, since a lot of us have moved over to MetaTrader 5 and Nova, um, you know, we have not really been able to, or 
we, not, we could, right? But since we're using MetaTrader 5, the original AlphaGo was built for MetaTrader 4. So a lot of us have kind of just put it on the back shelf, haven't really been using it much because we're primarily trading on MetaTrader 5 these days with Nova. Um, but the good news that I have is behind the scenes, HLX has been working on building out a brand new MetaTrader 5 version of AlphaGo. And the way that it actually manages trades is very, very similar to Nova. So, uh, you know, the way that it scales trades is going to be underneath your control. You're going to be able to choose the zone range, the buffer zone, your alligator period, all of these things that allow you to have full control over the manual trading software, which is amazing. So I'm super excited for that. Uh, you'll be able to use that on the same demo account that you're testing Nova, you know, that you're running Nova on. Uh, so you can actually do them side by side and have counter trades in different directions. So once that out is out, I will uh, I'll make sure that there's a, a video for MetaTrader, the MetaTrader 5 version as well. But I'm super excited because the Alpha original AlphaGo was amazing, but um, you know MetaTrader 5 just makes everything easier. So I'm very excited to be able to use that uh, alongside with Nova. And so yes, Al uh, Dave's asking, you know, is is Go for mobile devices? And yes, so AlphaGo has to be set up inside your VPS. And you have to apply it to just one specific chart, right? Any chart if you're choosing. And then any specific trade that you take, right? You want to trade on Euro USD, you want to trade on gold, you want to trade on CAD JPY. Any trade that you take, it's going to manage that trade. Uh, either your trade is going to hit your take profit that you enter in, or it's going to manage that trade in order to keep you from, uh, you know, having to take a loss on that trade. You get to choose if you want to get out of break even and just, you know, cover the loss. Or you can choose, hey, I want to get out break even plus 10 pips, plus 15 pips, so on and so forth. So uh, it's it's super exciting. I don't have an official date on when that's going to be released yet, but as soon as we have that, we'll be dropping that in the group, as well as more information and updates regarding Krypton. So awesome. Yes, Jesse, I am super excited as well. Alex, you're welcome, bro. Lots of sevens. All right, guys. Um, I'm gonna start closing it out here, but if there's any last questions, please feel to drop. Feel free, excuse me. Feel free to drop them now. And um, as far as the crypto software, uh, I mean, we're in the final stages. It really just comes down to getting the uh, approval and the, the the thumbs up from Crypto Dylan. You know, this is his baby. Um, corporate and him have been working on this hand in hand to basically take his strategy, wrap it into a software so that we can all take advantage of it without having to be pro traders on our own, which I think is amazing. Um, and so that's all we're waiting on at this at this time. So from what I have been told, uh, you know, I understand that it should be out before the end of the month, but at the same time, I don't wanna make any promises because if it is not up to Dylan's standards, then hey, I think it's worth waiting a few more weeks to get a, a perfect product as opposed to a subpar product compared to what he's shooting for. Boom, yeah, me too, Jeff. Cannot wait for the drop, man. Super exciting. Cool. I'm going to close it out there, guys. Five minutes to spare. Uh, if you guys have questions, we're all connected in the Telegram group and on Facebook. So ask your questions, get them answered. We want to help you. We want people to have a really solid experience and uh, really be able to use this stuff on their own personal trading. And uh, so once again, thank you guys for sticking around. You guys are welcome. Dale, Bud, I appreciate you guys. And um, until next week, we'll be back with Crypto Dylan on Wednesday. So make sure you mark your calendars, same time, same place. We'll see you there. Y'all take care.